I'm Kelly Busby with Kingwood College and we're going to talk about small volume nebulizers today. Small volume nebulizers are devices used to deliver medication and this is the, probably the most common thing we do after get, put, starting people on oxygen. Um, we'll get our medication. In this case I have a mixture of albuterol and atrovent which is a uh, beta drug and a cholinergic blocker. And I would open up the nebulizer cup here squeeze my medicine in, I've already got the medicine in here, and it sits in the cup. Then I put the top of it down and I attach this T-piece. And this T-piece is attached so that I can put a mouthpiece on, put the mouthpiece on, and then I put my reservoir hose on. Now we're ready to go. So I've, I've got my O2 line going to the bottom of the nebulizer. This is a jet nebulizer, just like we've been working with on the uh, tray collars. I turn this up. To six to eight is the, is the flow for this. I ask the patient to take slow, deep breaths. With an inspiratory hold. Now, since I'm giving this me the medicine, there's several things we have to do. We wash our hands very good so that we do not get, get this medicine infected. The other thing we do is take bottle signs and breath sounds before, in the middle, and after the treatment's over. This is because as we make the patient better, we should see the vital signs get better, we should see the breast sounds return to normal. If the patient has an adverse reaction to the medicine, usually it's a fast heart rate, we will catch that in time. So they'll do this for about 15 minutes. Toward the end of the treatment, the medicine, you're going to be tapping on the sides to keep the medicine to go down to the bottom. Sometimes toward the end of the treatment, I found it's helpful maybe to bounce the liter flow up to 10, but only at the very end because it does waste a lot of medicine. If I have a patient that has a tray collar, I can give the treatment just putting the tray collar on the end of the, of the reservoir hose. Then, so the medicine will go to the patient, to the patient's tray, a lot of people like to put a piece of plastic to close off the mouthpiece. Now when I turn my flow on, you'll see the plume go to the tracheostomy collar and the patient on the tray can take the treatment. If that patient can follow directions, some of them can, we will ask them to breathe slow and deep. But if they can't, we'll just go ahead and, and settle for what they can do. Now if you have a patient, like a very sick patient or a, a child or a very elderly patient who cannot cooperate and hold a mouthpiece in their mouth, we'll give the treatment with, whoops, this is the wrong time ever seen. See, that's a, a, a simple mask, it's not an aerosol mask. We'll put an aerosol mask on. And this way, when we're running it, they don't have to worry about crop rotting. Sometimes you can get them to take slow, deep breaths and, and hold it, but they may have trouble holding the mouthpiece in their mouth, in which case we'll go ahead and do that. Now, another type of nebulizer works on the same principle. The only difference is its nebulizer cup holds 30 cc's. Now, each cc holds runs for about um, five minutes, so this can hold more than a couple of hours worth of medicine. And we do this with back-to-back -back treatments, and the American uh, Heart Association has okayed albuterol for back-to-back -back treatments, and we'll be giving them with these devices. And this is not the only one of this kind. It works the same way as a jet nebulizer. And in this case, the jet comes in on the side. We have our capillary tube, our medicine's down on the bottom. The gas comes out the exact same way with a mist. And generally, with back-to-back -back treatments, we put it on a mask because a person can go, and sometimes they go to sleep because they're really tired. Okay, thank you.